Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will call the meeting to order uh, our August 1st, for the first meeting of August edition of City Council. Thanks everybody for joining us, whether it be uh, on the phone, in person, or on TV tomorrow night. Since they're not live this evening. So, um, if, if you would please, uh, as we go into our uh, moment of silence, um, City and the County lost uh, Eugene Souter uh, this week. Uh, I'd ask you to keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. Eugene was a city councilman, a city recorder. He was sheriff of Upshur County. He was a deputy. He, he served in many different capacities um, in, in our community. Uh, his uh, family is viewing his this evening and his funeral tomorrow uh, at South Buchanan Church. And also, um, one of our uh, city employees here, uh, her husband was involved in a uh, pretty bad car accident up toward Rock Cave uh, tonight and was lifelighted uh, down to Morgantown. Uh, so if you would keep uh, the Valencia and Garmin family in your prayers uh, this evening, uh, they would uh, appreciate that. So let's, let's enter our moment of silence. Vincent, since you're not here very often, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I certainly will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, if you'll uh, look at your agenda, um, B1, um, I've, I've spoken to Mr. Wolverton uh, this week and, and actually this evening as well. Um, he's, he's not going to be here this evening. Uh, we're going to, we're still working on uh, some uh, uh, specifics as far as uh, field time and space with football and, and soccer. So. Um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna try to come up with something um, sometime between now and, and uh, the middle of the month so uh, Keith's hanging tight uh, not going to be with us tonight and uh, soccer is not going to be with us tonight so we will keep on going down to B2 and I would ask uh, Ms. Wamsley if you would come up here please and parents be, wa be waiting for a picture how are you yeah. So this is my first one of these readings, so congratulations, you did my first one of these. I, Sarah Stankus with the Board of Education tried to get me to do one, and I said, you know, I'm not really the, 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 the proclamation guy, but so you, you are special. So uh, this is a marriage proclamation and scholarship, so congratulations. Uh, would you like me to read it, or would you like just to have the photo op? I'll give you the choice. Okay. Oh, I think you should read it there. You want me to read it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's your first one. Your first, first, one. First, one. Yeah. first one. Okay. First there. You just you have to get to stand up here longer, don't you? <laughs> okay. Marriage proclamation. Whereas Elizabeth J. Binky Poundstone served the city of Buckhannon for 37 years, several capacities, including the member of the city council, longtime city reporter, treasurer, and mayor, and Whereas Mrs. Poundstone died while serving as our city's mayor on September the 7th, 2000, leaving a rich and selfless legacy, legacy devoted to public service to our city and further to the youth of our Buchanan Upshur community. Whereas Mrs. Poundstone's family in 2008 proposed to, to the city council and the family funded a scholarship to be established for $500 to be awarded in August of each year, that's, that's now, uh, in memory of Mrs. Poundstone, to a deserving student seeking to attend college whose parent or other guardian or family member is or has been an employee with the city of Buchanan, or which employee in their own right is <clears throat> seeking to further their own education through college attendance. Whereas, so the city council considered and approved the award to, of the Poundstone Family Scholarship Proposed, or pro proposal during its regular convened meeting of July 3rd, 2008, 
agreeing to the city's participation in the annual scholarship application review and selection process. And whereas it, the process included the review and selection committee's consideration of several very well qualified applicants, you are one of those, with the committee determining that the 13th recipient of the annual Elizabeth J. Binky Poundstone Memorial Scholarship will be Madison Wamsley of Buckhannon, being the daughter of longtime City Water Department employee Jerry Wamsley and her mother Amy, as well as a great niece of longtime City Water Superintendent and Public Works Director, the late Harley Brown. Madison has worked for the last two years as a summer employee of our water department. I've seen you out there flagging <laughs> the, the traffic. Whereas the Poundstone family and our entire city of Buckhannon family desire to formally recognize Madison Wamsley and wish her, <clears throat> wish her the very best of luck as she begins her studies this fall as a freshman majoring in nursing at West Virginia Wesleyan College while also serving at, as a service scholar at the college. Now, therefore, I, Robert Neal Skinner III, Mayor of the City of Buchanan, pursuant to the power and authority duly vested in me, do hereby proclaim the 13th recipient of the annual Poundstone Memorial Scholarship to be Madison Wamsley. Ms. Wamsley further shall be recognized <coughs> as the recipient of the prestigious award through the inception of her name and a placard placed in display of the main foyer of Buchanan City Hall, along with past and future Poundstone Memorial Scholarship recipients. This given under my hand of the seal of authority on this day, August the 6th, 2020. Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead and smile, even though I can't see. <laughs> yeah. All in the eyes. All in the eyes. <laughs> How about the parents? Parents, yes. Yeah. Put them up the parents. And Mayor, the back side of that proclamation has got the important part on it. Yes, that's, yeah, that's where you're saying. I'll get that for you. They'll charge you interest. <laughs> yeah. When do you start school? August 17th. Photo session. anything to say but congratulations well thank you it's an honor to get this We're very proud of you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. That's right <laughs> well, they, didn't, they didn't they didn't have to see me they didn't have to see my lips move, so. okay Be on the phone. David, are you there on the yes. telephone? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you, sir, are up next. Um, I'll let you, Ambie's out in the hallway, but if you want to start us off uh, with your report, um, have at it. Okay. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Council for uh, engaging us again to the 2019 audit. Um, we uh, did that and everything was successful. We, especially during this uh, historical period that we are under, um, it was kind of a challenge, but we all got through it. And uh, we want to thank Amy and their staff for their cooperation and, and making everything success and giving us what we needed. Um, first, I'd like to say that uh, Remind everyone, first I want to ask the council members, if everyone in council got a copy of our audit report. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to remind everybody that we were engaged to uh, provide an opinion as to whether or not your financial statements were materially misstated or not. Um, we were not engaged to detect fraud, but there was not a specific uh, objective of our audit. And we were also not engaged to give an opinion on your internal control structure. So we look at very key things on the internal control structure that we use to rely on 
to form our opinion on the financial statement. So there may be material, there may be material weaknesses in your internal control system that we did not detect because we weren't looking for all of them. We did not do a in-depth study of internal control. However, I, I can say that the things that we did see, we had no uh, findings of material weaknesses or anything that we're required to uh, report to you under governmental auditing standards. Are there any questions so far about that part? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I also want to point out that we, uh, it was based on solely our judgment as to what transactions we looked at during an audit. Any audit, not just the ones that we performed. You know, an auditor cannot look at 100% of every transaction that occurs in the city during the fiscal year. So we rely on things like materiality, which is a calculated number that we look at for you know, the larger transactions, smaller uh, dollar items, multiple small dollar, large balance items, Google, uh, employee testing procedures, and do a test of, uh, of those small dollar items and then kind of extrapolate from our test to the, to the population. So I want you to understand we did not look at every uh, transaction that the city has. For example, you know, you have a pop machine somewhere, we didn't look at where all the money from that pop machine was going and how it was handled. Uh, it, so that kind of puts things in the context. Um, going into our financial report, if uh, you have a copy of it in front of you, I would like to call your attention to page four which um, is our independent auditor's report. And I wanted to once again congratulate the city <clears throat> management and staff that they received an unqualified opinion on the financial statement. Um, we did identify uh, adjustments that needed to be made to the city's books. And they were normally, not what we consider to be routine uh, transactions, for example, to uh, accrue the OPEB liability and such, the, uh, um, yeah, the OPEB liability, which those, those types of things are kind of very technical and a lot of, a lot of entities rely on the auditor to help them record those, those uh, transactions. We did not find any kind of material uh, errors in like cash receipts, cash dispersions, the, the day-to-day -day bread and butter kind of transactions. So we had no, no adjustments there. So we were able, once we made those adjustments for the uh, OPEB and things, we were able to give an unqualified opinion on your financial statements. So congratulations. Is there any questions on that? Um, if it's okay, I'll, just, I'll skip the numbers. They're pretty much straightforward. You know. You know, when the revenues exceed expenses, that's good. When expenses exceed revenues, that's bad. So I won't waste uh, council time unless you have a specific question about it. I will, however, jump on to uh, page 67. And that's where we talk about internal controls. Um, again, we, we looked at, well, controls over tax receipts, controls over tax disbursements, and controls over payroll uh, were the three main, three main areas that we test and rely on. And we found no uh, significant deficiencies and no material weaknesses in the internal controls that we looked at. And then on page 68, the first paragraph, compliance and other matters, we, we have an obligation to test the city's uh, compliance with certain laws, regulations, grant agreements, and contracts that uh, non-compliance with which would be deemed a uh, material uh, a material item. So things we looked at are making sure the payroll taxes have been paid. Um, <laughs> Okay, it's got a brain block. Um, 
the payroll taxes are the big one. Uh, look at the billing. Uh, make sure that your billings are that you bill your customers are in accordance with uh, rate tariffs and state law, things like that. And we were proud to uh, inform you that the city had uh, no instances of non-compliance that we were required to report under governmental housing standards. And I, you know, I would go farther than that and give you more comfort. We we actually found did not find any non-compliance uh, in our testing. Any questions about that? No, sir. All right. I must be doing a great job. I don't know. Everybody's still up now. Um, let's see. I think, Ms. Mayor, that's, uh, that's my report. And uh, if there be any questions, I would be happy to uh, try to fill them. Um, if not, then. I would ask the council to consider a motion to accept the audit for the 2019 year. Uh, council, um, you've heard the report. Um, do you uh, have any questions of, of Mr. Uh, Howe at all? Amy, do you have anything that you want to add to or comment on? Uh, no, it was a little different audit this year. We had to uh, exchange a lot of information through uh, mail or email or um, uh, phone calls, but um, uh, we managed to get through it. It was it was a little different than any audit. I like them being here. I like them looking at our books, but we were able to exchange enough information back and forth that uh, I felt pretty comfortable with everything. Okay. Council, you've heard the recommendation. Uh, do, we, do we hear a motion to second. approve it? Mary, motions. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sanders. All call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, uh, those opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. All right. Unanimously, I should add. Uh, thank you, Mr. Howe. Um, if council, if you, if during your review of this, uh, should have any questions, uh, I did notice that uh, on many of these pages, uh, Mr. Howe's uh, contact information is uh, there, so I'm sure he would not uh, be opposed to a question uh, sent to him via email or phone call uh, should one arise. So, uh, We would welcome it, sir. David, you don't have a very far trip tonight. Normally, you got to head all the way back down to the Kanawha Valley, but you're you don't you're you're in good shape now. I'm not all right. I got like three minute drive to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Be safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, Mayor, this is Mayor. This is Callie. Uh -huh. I just before you move forward with the agenda, I just wanted to let you know that both City Attorney Thomas O'Neill and Dr. Timothy Reese have joined us. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, we do have a gentleman here who is requested to address the council, uh, Mr. Lynn Gibbs. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Uh, just to briefly kind of let you know who I am. My name is Lynn Gibbs. I don't live in Buckhannon. I don't even live in Upshur County. I live on the Buckhannon River Road. My uncle's uh, helped Sparky Harsh, uh, or excuse me, Smokey Harsh, build Dodger Park. So I've been around Buckhannon for a long time. And the only reason I'm here is Mr. Smith called me back. And I just have come to it. Across from your youth center, you have the church with these tarps that are hanging there. So I I only have a preliminary drawing. I had a really nice one left at the house, but I think with the city and they have an in-house welder and things like that, if there's some kind of way that you could just make it so aesthetically it goes with the building. I mean, be an empty canvas, you guys can make all those choices, but the city has spent so much money beautifying downtown before you even became married for the longest time. You know, people, my dad's in dialysis, Telling Mr. Smith on the phone. So I'm in Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. In the morning, I drop him off. So I see all the stuff that's happened. And people drive around, they're watering flowers. I'm from Philippi. That's not really 
as progressive as I can in the downtown area. It has some flower pots, that's about it. You guys are spending a lot of money, and you're getting ready to spend even more at the Chase Bill. So, my whole deal is, I'm not trying to change anybody's attitude or thought. I'm just looking at that building. You have the little fresh air market, people come to that, you gotta walk past that. Kids playing basketball right now. Right? The number one thing that I would say is you have to have safety. I was telling Mr. Smith, you just have somebody weld up something, make sure that no kid can get in there. Just do whatever you, you have to do. And he was kind of explaining to me on the phone that you know you can't just come in and do something like that. But I have a couple of attorneys in my life that have told me that even though I don't know what the state of West Virginia's codes for eminent domain are, you can still tell somebody to do something because guess what? You spent a lot of money, and time, and effort, and their building is ugly. Fix it. That's it. You should. Whoever the people are that own that building should be responsible and respectful for what has happened in downtown Buckingham. Like I said, I grew up in Philly. It's not the same thing. It isn't. Mm -hmm. I've been to Philly. Sometimes. I'm sorry. It's really not a joke, guys. I'm sorry. Yes, it's very sad. It's not as progressive as I can. Some people say, oh, well, you have the highway that came in. Well, that's here or there anyway. But Kane has always been more ahead of the game than Phil. I grew up in both because I said my uncle's new Smoky Harsh. My grandparent, my father, my grandfather owned Hawkins S on Philippi, if you know where that is, by the old fire department. Just to give you a little history. But like I said, I'm not here to change anything. I just think that the city should address that to whoever owns that and come to some agreement. Split the cost. You got in house welders, you got streetscape people, you got all kinds of stuff. You can take this little sketch on me, go with it, make your own thing. Just talk to the people. I'm not trying to change anybody's viewpoint. I just know that you have spent an awful lot of money. You have spent a whole bunch more. Right there. That's that. uh, the only thing, that's the only liability I see is that building and the ugly green one next to it. Well, we're glad that's the only liability you see. But <laughs> when you, you know, that it's um, we've long, uh, and we I appreciate you coming, um, and I appreciate that you share that that you believe that Buckhannon is a progressive community, and, and we 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 do too. I mean, we we pride ourselves in that we are a, you know, we're a community that is as as Councilman Rylands would say, uh, I don't want to steal his thunder, but you know, affordable, welcoming, safe. And, Community where everyone is it has a seat at the table and is welcome to participate and encouraged to do so, and we've we've tried to uh, we've tried to have that mantra over the years. And uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and we've we've worked on a lot of things in, uh, over the years in this community. And um, we uh, you know we, we do have some properties uh, and some stubborn property owners here and there, uh, but we're you know we 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 just started to meet um, actually this past month um, through housing enforcement. I know that's not technically housing, but talking about properties that, so and how to go about it. In, in well, we don't. We, Except you're not tearing them down. Right. We, 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 we don't. We're, an issue. we're trying to encourage folks and, and, and be more encouraging to folks, uh, more persuasive to make sure that their properties match what their neighbors uh, have done. And the next time you talk to this person, you tell them that somebody has no business being in your business, drives around in the morning time, and he has an eyesore. You should do something about it. And that's really, really helpful. Yeah. Vince, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I mean, we, we spoke. Mr. Mayor, maybe before you go too much further, it was a little oh. difficult to hear. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Or guess over the phone. And would you mind just summarizing just briefly uh, for us uh, what the state of Buck Hannon's uh, property tax code is and what the current state of the Do you want me to do it or uh, can we just move the, the, the speaker closer to uh, the, closer to the uh, to, to But I have a really nice one, but you guys have really artist people with us. Draw whatever the heck you want. Do it. Uh, really. Thank you so much, Mr. Gibbs. Mr. Gibbs, uh, we we apologize 
Well, first off, I want to apologize because I am from the river and I didn't dress. I'm going to do it after I'm done dressing. Oh, that's okay. None of my bees. I'd rather there. be on the river, so. <laughs> no, I'm going back. Um, uh, they they had a hard time hearing. We apologize. We had the phone over here. Would you just in, just briefly summarize for the for the? Uh, well, I don't. Uh, if you could help me, the building that I'm referring to. This used to be a church. Correct. I went there one time with a Tim and Becky sap. Long ago, when it was still functioning, I understood that there was a restaurant that was supposed to be in the middle part there. Is it there or not? I don't know. It, I'm, it's no. one of my beeswax. But the building I'm referring to is right across the street from your police and fire department, which at one time used to be food land, because I remember all the fucking stuff, because I was a kid that grew up here. So, if you were aggressive enough to do something there, that could have just been an empty building, like Philip did. So, that's once again. I could address that just for a second. If I go to city council in Philippi, most people aren't paying a bit of attention to what a citizen is saying. And I live in Barbara County, so enough said there. Here, not so much. So the building is ugly. It is also a liability. It has to be. I walked this evening when I before I came here, I parked behind it and I walked through with a little pipe thing in the alley. It's just disaster. Some kid could get hurt, anything could happen. Some bum or vagrant could jump at it. Anything. It just shouldn't be that way. So I guess if you didn't hear me before, these folks can tell you later on, but you should just address the issue. I know that your attorney is there on the phone and you have issues with that also, but as I said, I have a local attorney, Mr. George Triplett Sr. He doesn't practice anymore, he's a friend of mine, a personal friend of mine. I have a big time attorney down in Charleston, both of them have told me that even if West Virginia does not have eminent domain, I'm well aware of what powers the cities or counties can do. And I'm not telling you all to tell this person, hey, right. just cooperate with them and tell them that, like I said, some guy has no business even being here. So I'll know how ugly that is. And you have invested a lot of money to get ready to put a whole bunch more right across the street. That's all. And I, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to make anybody mad. That person, anybody here, that's not my intention. Do you, do you have, you want to address anything, Vince? Well, he was no, nice enough to you. call me back, and I wasn't there, so I called him, and then he had to hear my whole thing for like even longer than you've had to hear. No, I mean, it's, really. it, it, it's a problem. The tarps are there, and we were aware of it. We were with hopes that a restaurant was going in there. But through the whole COVID, uh, you know, set down dining has has become. Anyway, thank you for listening. I really sure. do appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming. I hope something can be done. If not, then I hope something can be done. <laughs> well, we, 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 right. we appreciate the kind words that you, you That's all right. shared about our community. So. And if, for one more thing, you know, if you think about Philippine Buckhand and a very quite similar, one has a college, so is the other one. One progressive, the other one, not so much. Just because your uh, college is on a hill, don't make a hill of beans. It's the same thing. Same community. You got a highway, we did. Wham, wham. You make up. They own a lot of buildings. They're all in shambles. They, they own the movie theater. But it's a disaster. You go downtown, windows are painted like hippies have gone down there with spray paint and trying to do their best. It's not the way to address trying somebody to come down to your town. If I can, not so much. You don't have one window boarded up. A couple that don't have people in it, but always somebody moving in and out. Yeah. Just the way it is here. And you know we bought the downtown food. Yes, sir. And uh, renovating, you got grants and everything like that. Philip used to have a grant writer. He was one of my high school teachers, Mr. Doug Shuffleby. I don't know if you know him or not. Know him very well. The nice Jim. And you tell him that you met me, and then he'll. No, he and his wife and I. Jill Shuffleby, no art teacher. No, their kids. Yeah. So, anyhow, I won't waste any more of your time. I'm sorry if I wasted any more of your time. You want to consider moving to Buck Island? I live on the river. Why would I do it's that? Halfway in between. <laughs> do both. It takes me ten miles to move here, come here from Park Yeah. Well, I drive my own speed limit and I never have a traffic problem. It's the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> thank you for coming. All right, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. You say good luck for your father. All right, now. Thank you now. Laura, are you on the phone? 
Yes, sir, I am. Oh, good. Well, it's your turn. You can uh, give us either the, the, the doom and gloom or the, 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 the great news coming from the CBB. <laughs> I always promise that I try to make this as quick as possible. And this is really weird to do my annual report um, from a computer. So um, I'll, I'll try to come back here the next quarter and give a proper report face-to-face -face in council if that works out. Um, but I believe you have in your packet the annual report of the Usher County Convention and Visitors Bureau for this past fiscal year, which is 2019 to 2020. Um, so I will just run through everything. I mean, I'm sure you all can read it, but I will highlight some things. If you have questions, please jump in at any time. I'm happy to answer anything. Um, so I, I joked this morning at County Commission and I said, you know, part of me just wants to say this past year, I just want to forget it happened and just move on to next year, um, this next current fiscal year, but we, we definitely want to look back and looking back maybe realize the things that we were able to accomplish and, you know, with, with COVID kind of throwing us all upside down, it's, I'm trying to look at it as an opportunity for what we can, we can really um, shift for this upcoming year too. Um, but we really continue to stick with our brand that is um, small town getaway, big time charm. And it's super fitting in today's world just because everybody is trying to escape those overpopulated locations and they want to find a small community where they feel safe, where they, you know, they're not, there's not people on top of each other. There's plenty of outdoor recreation. Um, and you know, just that safe factor is, is much more important to people um, than it's been in the past. Um, so that's been our, our tagline and our theme and brand. Everything we do revolves around that. So all of our imagery, all of our um, wording, all of our content really just kind of focuses on that theme. So everything's super cohesive. Um, and something we've recognized the past few years is Buckhannon's Main Street is certainly well known. Um, if you say Buckhannon or Upshur County, people instantly just talk about, you know, Main Street flowers, how our downtown's always thriving, we always have full storefronts, which is phenomenal. And we definitely want to continue with that um, momentum. But we also, for the past few years, have really been focusing on the outdoor recreation aspect of our community. So I think it's awesome that we have both worlds. We've got the small town feel where you can go shopping and you can eat at some local restaurants, but then in 10, 15 minutes you're out and you can be trout fishing, you can be kayaking down the river, you can be camping um, at a local campground or even a state campground. So we've really been trying just to focus on that outdoor recreation, so that way we're completing a whole package for people. Um, this past year, we were able to fully produce, I believe we printed 10,000 of um, Audra State Park wrap cards. The state no longer produces individual printed pieces for state parks. So we um, finally just made sure we fulfilled that. We worked with the Audra State Park superintendent and um, super happy with the turnout. So we've been able to distribute those throughout the state um, and then also allow Audra to distribute those too. Um, this past year we did decide we would start doing hosting the walking dinner tours on a quarterly basis rather than just in conjunction with the City of Buckhannon Fall Fest. And those were super popular. We did a winter walking dinner tour. And I'm almost certain that evening we had a little white snow fall on Main Street. And it was just real, it's just amazing atmosphere. Um, we had plans to do a spring one, but of course that had to be canceled. Um, this past year, we've worked really strongly with My Buchanan in doing a series of editorials. I think editorial because it's not really an ad, not really an editorial, but it's just a combination of the two. Um, and working with My Buchanan, we get the, the strengths of their team with storytelling, with great photography, and then they're also working with us to reach a target market of people who aren't in Buchanan, because that's really our goal. We're not trying to promote Buchanan to people living in Buchanan. Um, we really are trying to hit those populations like um, the D.C., Eastern Panhandle area, Pittsburgh, um, over in Toronto, Virginia. We're really trying to hit those outside populations, and um, anything we do, that's, that's the ultimate goal. 
Um, we started a new Strawberry Festival website. The one that they have right now has just become outdated on the back end operating system. Um, we are a little bit behind just due to the COVID issues, but we do intend to complete that project. We're just waiting on the proper timing to make that work. Um, but I think by the 2021 festival, for sure, we should be able to launch a new website for them. Um, we also were able to um, become reaccredited for another three years, and that's a, that's a great process. It's super in depth. I mean, we're taking pictures of our office space. We're submitting all of our financials. We're submitting our marketing plans. We're submitting um, just a little bit of everything. And there, the accreditation committee looks at um, all aspects of how a CDB operates. And the biggest thing that we can say is, you know, we're following state code. That's what accreditation really focuses on. And we're, we're just following the rules and we're doing the best we can with the money that we are able to receive through hotel mental tax. Um, we also did this past year relaunch our advertising grant program. And again, COVID has kind of shut things up, but we're, we're kind of regrouping a little bit. But our first advertising grant recipient was the James W. Curry Campground and Library facility in the southern end of the county. And we were able to produce a rack card for their facility to let people know about the campground. Um, we do have a social media promotion running right now. And we're in um, discussions to try to build them a pretty basic, but um, you know, a sole website just for their purpose. Right now they're on a, a Google platform and they just need something a little bit more permanent. Um, so we were really happy to work with them. And you know, again, to have a local campground in Southern Hampshire County, it's really nice. And if somebody's been to that facility, it's beautiful up there. And it's just, again, another great asset that we have in our area. Um, MTN update, MTN stands for the Mountaineer Trail Network. And that was a piece of legislation that was introduced two years ago and originally included nine counties that did not include Upshur. But um, nine counties that came together and were really just laying out a foundation for future trail development. Um, and there's, there's not any real concrete um, project that's coming out of this right now, but again, it's a foundation laying for future trail development. Um, so two years ago was the initial legislation, and this past year, Upshur County was included into this trail network. Um, and I think it's going to be a great opportunity for Upshur County because it's putting us in um, connection with other areas that already have super established trail networks, like Tucker County, we're looking up into Mon County, um, it's a huge market, and with the work that's being done by the Upshur County Trails Group and the continued efforts that Cali's putting into it and the City of Buchanan, County Commission, and all these groups coming together, I know that Upshur County is really going to, at some point we're going to be able to connect all these trails. We're going to continue to expand things, and it's going to be a great opportunity for us. Um, so we're just super supportive of all of those initiatives. It's not us doing the work, but we, we find ways to support people as much as we can. Um, and the one other thing, which is something small that I was happy to do this last year, was just to produce two um, Fat Cannon stickers that we can hand out. Um, again, this past spring and summer, we were going to really hit a lot of um, festivals and fairs and hand it out. To you know, to promote Buckingham and get people to feel warm and fuzzy in the area, but those um, didn't quite work out, but we still have them, so we will find ways to get those distributed. And I put the viewfinders on there, but I forgot we actually had that at last year's um, annual report to play around with, but those are always fun for sure. Um, so that's just a really brief overview of our past year, and just look, does anybody have any questions? I'm Randall. Any questions for Laura? Forgive me, what, what was the name of the campground and, uh, up, up, or down in the southern part of the state again? It's James W. Curry Campground. That's what I thought you said, okay. It's in the southern part of the county, right? Yes, okay. yes, yeah. yeah, it's on, it's in West Hill on top, right above Selbyville. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. you're welcome. Mary, did you have a comment? Um, I, I just know that they've worked really hard hard times and they pulled it together and I 
put in the Laura and everybody that serves on that committee because the fire, fireman guys. What? Who is it that does the uh, bike trails, Laura? The bike trails, the Upshur County Trail. is a group of volunteers right, right. now. Group of, you know, they're working on that. They, they're, they're just involved in lots of things and can't do anything. So if you can go ride your bike, <coughs> walking, um, and maybe canoeing one day. Who knows? That's right. Do that. She's got a lot out of this. So thank you. So, thank you, Mary. Um, the only thing I'll say for this upcoming year is it's going to be drastically different like everybody else, and we're trying to stay as creative and open as possible. So um, I'm always open for ideas. Um, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't, but I'm always happy to kind of bat around different things that we could be doing or ways we could be supporting people. So. Um, feel free definitely to reach out to me anytime. And, you know, I'm looking again at this year as a way to reevaluate everything we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it um, from a financial aspect and then also just to make sure we're being as, um, you know, as engaged as possible with actual visitors coming to our area. So, um, you know, we're going to rely a lot on social media and a lot on just our community network. Of resources, so it'll be a, it'll be a different year for sure. Um, you can see on the third page just some statistics of how, um, who we've reached and um, you know all of our impacts through some of our advertisements. I won't read this off. I think I've covered a lot of it. Um, and for the event center, just to highlight that I counted on our um, calendar of events. We had a total of 47 events. Um, and then should COVID have not happened, we would have had probably another 10 or so um, at the facility. Some of those events were multi-day events. Um, some of them were during the day, a lot were during weekends. And I always like to point out that we have one full-time staff person dedicated to the event center, and that's Sean Harris. And Sean's out there at 2 a.m. taking care of things, getting everything wrapped up, and then sometimes he's back out at the building at 8 a.m to, you know, handle something else. So he's super dedicated to it, so we're fortunate to have him this right up his alley. Um, but yeah, 47 total events. Our revenue, of course, was um, drastically lower than what we've seen in the past, but at 22,600. Um, but the event center's always, there's always something different. I feel like sometimes we have some growing pains with it, but um, vendor's also always well worth it for sure. Um, and then you'll see just some photos of things that we've, we've um, produced in this past year, um, some of the Facebook campaigns that we ran, um, the um, photography, all kinds of great stuff. Um, and I believe, I, I emailed Teresa a little bit later, I don't know, do you have our financials? Yeah, we do, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah. And you can see from our um, profit and loss statement, we, we operated at a loss this year, and it was a little painful. Um, but, you know, again, we are, we're kind of stepping back. We're being super conservative going into this upcoming fiscal year. Um, and, you know, we'll just keep on, keep on moving forward. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? Do you have any figures on uh, the hotel motel? Uh, usage, how far down we were this year because of COVID. Um, well, and I will, I will point out before COVID, we were already low. Um, so I, I I'll kind of remind myself, even without COVID, we were going to have one of our worst years financially um, that we've ever seen. And Andy could probably speak to that too. But um, for the entire fiscal year, I mean, I think hotel retail taxes down nearly by 50%. Okay. Um, maybe not quite 50%, but it's a it's dramatic decrease. That's all on gas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need it. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of oil and gas, the lack of travel now for pushing six months. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, going on gas was short term anyway, but we obviously hope, hopefully, we can find ways to put more heads in beds, you know. Moving forward after COVID-19. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, you need to rely on a certain industry, but I mean, it certainly does um, benefit our community. Anything else for Laura? Any other questions? Well, Laura, we, I mean, we, uh, we appreciate everything you do to promote our town and our county. Um, you know, and as you said, just because folks here don't, don't see advertising, it's not meant for us. We, we're, we already live here and, and, right. and, and we, we, we see and, and hear and know what's in our own backyard, but we need, we need folks outside of a pandemic, of course, to, uh, to, to know what we're about in, in other, other regions. So um, the CBB is invaluable to our town and to our, our county and, and um, you know, any, anything we can do to help uh, weather the storm with you, please, please let us know. Thank you very much. And I'll just say, I've been working with Laura a bit more uh, on the, the project, the bid proposal we're still working on for the band association. And Laura, thank you. You've been super responsive and provided loads of information. So thank you for all of that help. And we'll be back in touch awesome. soon with some uh, updates on the proposal. I think it's really been uh, hard for them, okay, because you know, they didn't give full wages, but they still worked. Right. Okay. And um, and I want to thank them for for doing that. Okay. Laura, John, both of them, because there's only two people there. The others are part time. Thank you, things. Mary. You're very welcome, and I enjoy working with you. I'm proud of you. And there was a big um, thing on TV last Sunday. It wasn't wasn't from us, but it was on Channel 12. And, and it was um, all of the state parks, just a whole 30 minute segment of that. WBOY 12? Yes. Yeah, and it was, it was great. All, and Audra was there, um, just every, every place, it was great. I wish we could get that and put it on our website there, Laura. What do you yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to find that. I yeah. didn't see that piece. Yeah, that was just last weekend. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. All right, Laura, you can go tend to your wild maniacs at home. Oh. All three of them. Tell me. I tell, barricaded tell, my door so they tell, can't come tell in. Tell Johnny I said all three of them. So. <laughs> that's very true. Thank um, you, Laura. Th thank you all th th thanks, Laura. Thank you. Okay. Uh, down in the department and board reports, um, Vincent Smith is with us this evening. He's first up on the list. And I'll make it short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, just an overview of basically what I've been doing since the first of the year. Um, I've written six warning tickets and six citations. And to get to those, uh, and, and Tom is, is now helping me, we have a, I know some of you guys get frustrated when you say, hey, there's high grass or there's trash in somebody's yard. We had a procedure we had to follow, which takes upwards of two and a half months to get the whole procedure. Well, by that time, the trash is terrible, the rats are in the trash, the grass is three foot high. So Tom has done some research, and he can he can chime in any time, but he's done some research and found an avenue that will allow us on special occasions, i.e. grass and trash, something that's, you know, uh, eminent danger to the community, he's allowed us to speed that process up. So uh, we're, we're working with that, hoping to circumvent that to make when we get these complaints so we can go quickly to resolve them rather than than what it had been in the past so uh, and just saying that Tom is is helping with that so we'll we'll get it we'll get it streamlined here All right moving on tom has got another ordinance that we that's mandated by the state fire marshal that we update the 2015 national electric code they now went to 2017 and a couple other things and he's going to get an emergency ordinance 
that's going to push that through. It was supposed to be done by August 1st, uh, but the fire marshal has given everybody, there's only one municipality in the entire state that has done it, and it wasn't one of the big ones. So, well, we're, uh, and uh, I would note on that, the, the fire marshal sent out their notice that this needs to happen on July 23rd. 23rd. Right. It's very short August time. First. So we're kind of in a yeah, right. situation out of our making. All right. The other thing in, in that ordinance, 367, we have a vacant building ordinance. And I know some of you that have been on council, we, we revised that ordinance back in 2015. We uh, kicked it around. We notified people a couple times, and Ambie can tell it's, it's a long, drawn-out process to get them notified, and, and they want to tell us that, it's yes, it's vacant, but we come in and use it in the summer, or we use it in the winter, or we use it for storage. Well, we're, we're pushing that a little farther. We've, we've identified 57 vacant homes in the city, all right? I'm just giving you guys a heads up to know that you're going to get some phone calls to say why are we implementing this now, okay? It's been, we, we've notified them, we, were, we had to go ahead to do it. It's been so hard to track it and, and I mean you would need, and Amber could tell you, you would need a full-time person just to do that and here, you know, I'm three days a week and Ambie will pull, you know, a girl off and, and, and do the research. You got to make sure window water, water usage, all that. So it, it was, it, it was long and drawn out. And I apologize for that, but we are, we are moving on that, and you will, I'm sure, get phone calls. So, now, people, Vince, when you say you're moving on that, can you be more specific? <laughs> I would say probably within two weeks we can send out letters, two, three weeks, yes. I would say. Yes. To send out the, the let, we've sent out the letters, this will be the billing. invoice, mm -hmm. the billing. Alright, so I would say within two to three weeks we'll, we'll have that. What we don't want to do, we check and recheck, we don't want to send one out on an error. We want to make sure every one that we send out is is solid. And about three years ago, or four years ago, we had 149 on the list. We did, good memory. And we yes, we did, did. and we, we whittled it down. And, and people, so the ordinance did what it was supposed to do. People said, hey, they're going to start charging me if I don't do something with this property, so I'm going to rent it, or I'm going to sell it, or I'm going to do something, because the fee structure goes from 200 to 1600 after five years, so it would get pretty substantial. So, I, I think it's important that a couple of weeks ago we had a house in court, and we had a, I thought it was a, one of the best meetings we've ever had, quite frankly. It was one of the frustrations that a lot of people have is we have not had any teeth to some of our letters and citations and so forth and we were talking about the same properties in some cases for over 10 years and and you know what people are concerned about the citizens that are residing here most of them they see the deterioration and their property values with people not taking care of their properties that are near them and i think that's something that you know the housing enforcement committee uh, needs to be commended for that you're here this evening and the council members we're going to get phone calls and uh, the main thing i'm concerned about is we all deal with a level playing field uh, we don't give somebody an extra deal because of who that person is or what the organization is and uh, you know as the mr gibbs said uh, this is a great community in many many ways and he sees it three times a week and uh, when things are not taken care of it becomes real eyesore. So that's I appreciate you coming here. This well, time. and on that same note, uh, Tom has has been so gracious to draft us a a letter that we've sent out, and and 
address two of these issues for junk and debris on our right-of-ways yep. and put them on a very short timeline and two of those are the the 10-year violators that you're that you're referring to yep. so uh, I, I think at the direction of the Housing Enforcement Board we have we, we are proceeding to put some teeth in, in things well we we owe it to the neighbors yes. in these neighborhoods that diligently faithfully keep up their properties day in and day out year in and year out and it's just not right that one piece of property can pull down an entire neighborhood it's just not and you know it, it, if you show pride in, in your residence and and your next door neighbor does not it really just you you wonder what you're doing it for because your property value is adversely affected when your neighbor's property is not, you know, kept up to par. So we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud as punch that we're doing this. I'm, I, we, we need, it's time that we, we need to make sure that, it, that it's a priority that our neighborhoods are kept uh, safe and uh, kept up to, and kept into good, good order. And, and in saying that, I will, I will go one step further. Uh, Ambie and I went last November to the tax sale and we identified two properties that the city had liens against. Historically, we, when there's liens on properties, if they get sold at taxes, we lose that lien. We're done. We've lost our money. And we had a good one on Wood Street that we lost several thousand dollars on. So at the direction of council, Amby and I, and it was kind of scary, it was new to us, we had never been to it. but. We went and bid on two of the properties that we had liens on. We're hoping to get the blessing of council and do that again this November when they come up. And what that does, these are blighted properties. That puts a control in our hands that 18 months down the road when they become that, we can do something with them. We can, i.e. tear them down, fix them up, sell them to someone that will fix them up with a with a remediation plan in place. Um, I, I think it's a good thing and I, I want to thank council for allowing us to do that to protect our interests. Well, you know, Vince, one of the opportunities with the vacant fee structure is that money can be used uh, to help do this whole situation. Yeah, you're absolutely and right. That's, that's what it was the, earmarked for. That was the original intent for the vacant fee. A absolutely. The fees were to go in against blighted properties you're right so um, are we going to be presented a, um, an ordinance or anything this evening no it's it, your ordinance is already in place oh, no. this is just informational okay. to tell you what we're going to do expect phone calls we're, we're doing we're doing probably what we could have done a few years we, we are, time, but it. We took time to walk through 149 pieces of property. Right. So we're we've streamlined it. Some of them have have been torn down. So you know we've we've narrowed it down. We're down to like I say, 57 <coughs> of them now. So we've come a long way. Thanks for remembering that, Dave. I forgot that number. Well, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. All right. But other than that, we've been working on building permits as as you all know you'll you see a lot of them hanging in the windows and if you don't see give us a call that's a that's a perfect thing i, I drive the city monday wednesday and friday i'm all over it so if i miss something hey there's somebody working give me a, shoot me a text give me a call we'll make sure that their, their permits are in place yep all right the last thing i have are pools and you're probably going to get some feedback on that. Over the years, pools, and we changed our ordinance here about two years ago, I believe. The fence requirement, two, maybe three years ago. Might have been right before Tom came on board, I think. Yeah, two and a half years. Yeah, something. But anyway, we've changed that, and we're trying to get people, people will call in for a pool adjustment for the water. I go out and check 
if it doesn't have a six foot fence or a barricade around it, we don't give it to them. Well, now we're getting, hey, that pool's been there for 15 years, 18 years, 22 years, something. Why are you getting me now? Well, so we're, you know, they're, they're thinking they should be grandfathered in. We're saying that, hey, get up to today's code. And, and the purpose of that is if you have a child that, that can climb over the fence, drown in your pool, that would be a tragic, tragic day in our, in our city. So that's what we're trying to prevent. Okay. I would, I would give individuals very much time at all for pools. Yeah. Isn't that an insurance requirement, Robbie? It depends on the company. Uh, as far as most, most are at, at least four foot. Some go as high as eight foot, but most you won't find anything below a four foot. But most are sitting around six foot, right, right in the middle sweet spot. And that's what we, that's what we have adopted. Yeah. Also mentioned too, uh, you're working closely with uh, Tanner Smith from the city fire department. Uh, uh, he's he's been a he's been a help uh, in you in going around to, to different properties and making especially restaurants and uh, making sure that they're up to up to code. He has uh, top, uh, Tanner does the life safety portion of, of the code enforcement, which we go hand in hand. It's been a great great asset for the city. Uh, we're trying to, you know, we've had restaurants that had uh, Ansel systems over their cook stoves that hadn't been tested for five years. So we're trying to get everybody on track. I mean, it uh, it just there's always something new coming up, and and we uh, we try to stay above the curve. Yeah. Thanks for all your work, Vince. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. Does the council uh, have any further comments or questions for Vince before he heads back down to Clarksburg Road? Well, he's got a birthday coming up. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> I want to say we... thank you, Vince. Are you getting close to 50? <laughs> yeah, one more time. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Don't forget the 24th. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got you. We're on. Okay. Good work, Vince. Uh, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Vince. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Vince. Be safe. That's the best report I've ever heard of the house. We had a really good meeting. Yeah, I had a little bit of a... Okay. Uh, next up, Callie is joining us on the phone, our information coordinator and grant researcher. Her report is in the packet. Callie, you want to walk us through it? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you have your my report in the packet. It starts out with information about what we've posted on Facebook and then goes into what, website postings as well. I'll not read through every one of those. There's 20 or so social media posts and a, a bit fewer on website. Uh, the reason for that being we share uh, some of our community partners' information from time to time on social media, and those don't necessarily get uh, posted to our website. So that's the difference in the number of posts between the two. Uh, but I did want to mention uh, certainly the one, the press release that we put out today. It's not a city streets project, uh, but Jerry and Jay have been working with the DOH and they will be initiating a uh, significant um, paving project on Route 20 at the railroad crossing and it will close both lanes, northbound and southbound. So we got that out uh, today. I'm sure Jerry might have more information on that as well. So that's something for you to be aware of. Um, but also working to get together this year's River Fest will be a virtual, you know, online type event. But as part of that, it's going to be throughout the week there will be lunch and learn type activities. And the Gibson Library will be participating by having a story time on the Tuesday, it's the August 17th through the 20, 22nd, so that's coming up. And the Gibson Library will be participating, I'll be doing a story time down there and Leah Barber um, will be doing a kids activity as well. Uh, there will be a tour of our water plant, hopefully if all goes well, because <laughs> I'll go down and 
either Jared Myers or Kelly Arnold, someone will lead us through and I'll be live streaming from the phone, which then will be Facebook live and we'll just hope that all comes together. And also probably we'll work Dixie Green and the horticulture program into that and uh, all the best practices that she and streets and parks use in reducing our impact in the waterways and when we're doing those flower, doing the flower program. Um, let's see what else on Riverfest, if anything. So definitely keep your eye out for that. That event should be going live either uh, this evening or tomorrow. So uh, you can participate with that online. Also preparing for another tour that week, we'll be touring the theater for the Chamber of Commerce. And again, I hope technology cooperates. So uh, that will be a Monday of that week. Um, let's see, I continue to operate our go-to meetings and updating the website and participating in the COVID-19 task force meetings. Uh, also participated this week in an online convening of all the state's volunteer centers, including our own, and gave a little presentation on that. And, and the other news posting that we did that I wanted to note, and it's also F2 in your agenda, is that Apothecary Way uh, was the most it received the most first choice votes out of the poll that we did of the five choices that we gave people when we narrowed that down from all the um, suggestions that we had received prior. Um, so Apothecary Way was the one that people really thought would be a great new street name over by CVS running between East Main Street and Franklin Street. Uh, also, there's a job posting right now on our website and on the Gibson Library's site. They have an opening for a library aid. And of course, we did let folks know that uh, Channel 3 was not able to live stream tonight, but that it will be broadcasted uh, eventually later, I'm assuming tomorrow. Yeah. And looking down now towards the grants, uh, still working with, uh, this isn't a grant, but still working with Josh. Friend on um, his research projects. Uh, he helped out quite a bit with that street name survey. He's also conducted the Riverwalk usage survey. And now we're getting ready to roll out probably tomorrow a uh, survey looking at how we did uh, moving to distance operations during the, uh, the entire statewide shutdown uh, when City Hall was completely shut down, how we transitioned both city council meetings and our business operations here and how how happy with uh, those options that we're provi providing the public with uh, for paying utilities or watching a, a city council meeting, that sort of thing. I'll note this is the first time for this whole thing that uh, we haven't been live streamed. So it's all in all, I think it's been going really well. Uh, but it will be good to hear, you know, what the public thinks about that as well. They might have a different thought on that. Um, we had submitted our June CARES Act uh, grant application, we did get notification that we will receive $98,990 for June in CARES Act. Um, we're still working on the PATH and the 5K routes. Uh, we got our AML grant award, or application, I hope it's an award. I was going to say, you've about, <laughs> about got me. Uh... Submitted, no award at this point. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a wishful thinking, maybe. We'll keep crossing our fingers on that. And through. I think that's about it, working with Creative by Canon to have another image up on our LED screen, uh, so we'll be looking for that soon. And that's all I have, unless you have questions. Uh, Callie, um, could we put a, um, a, uh, shoot, a link on our, on our Facebook and maybe our website to um, I, I stumbled across this the other day. West Virginia Living does the best of West Virginia. And there are mm -hmm. several Buchanan landmarks that are nominated. Uh, several of our restaurants are our are, uh, are are bed and breakfast. <clears throat> Jack Rigger is uh, on there as one of the best places to stay. Uh, CJ Maggie's, <clears throat> Councilman Rylands is one of the best restaurants on there. Um, could we could we go to their website and maybe put a link to for folks can uh, go nominate and vote and and uh, support our Buchanan landmarks that are on there? Yes, absolutely. I have not seen that, so I appreciate you sharing that. We will definitely do that. Good. I appreciate that. Okay. 
and then encourage people through Facebook maybe to uh, vote for their favorite Buchanan uh, restaurant, retail shop, bed and breakfast, park. Absolutely. We're on there a good bit, which is good. So, anything else for Callie? Thanks for all your work, Callie. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Callie. Thank you. Back in shoulder. Okay. Mr. Arnold. Back in here, you He's ready to give his report. He assured me it was going to be about 45 minutes. So. I've had four to five minutes, right? Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think he's going to watch We're all going across the street while you give your report, so. <laughs> Under the director, I'm right, I'll stay in here. <laughs> the only thing under the director I have is uh, the results of the bid opening for the concrete next to my down in the agenda. Hmm. The street department continues to work on the Gateway West project, and we've been working in the theater and cleaning curbs, trying to get ready for painting. Uh, also, the sewer department, crew one, continues to work on the uh, 33 West North Side sewer line extension and through two completed the Zeno Street extension. The water department, uh, actually that should be installed now. They finished it up this afternoon. The fire service at the Colonial Theater will be uh, pouring the sidewalk and the street back tomorrow and then uh, with black topping for uh, the patchwork there on Main Street next week. Waste department, waste board had a meeting this evening and voted to discontinue Crossroads Recycling. We just had so much contamination issues and trash out there and we've got folks, uh, if, there, if there is a highlight to some of the COVID stuff, it's we got folks used to bringing uh, most of their stuff out to our facility, which instead of about 70% uh, contamination rate, we can be down about 10 to 15% contamination rate. So again, that, that helps us out tremendously. When we're all in trash, we're actually doing recycling like we should be doing. Um, under engineering, the Porter H South Utility Installation Project, that's the Jeff Allen project, both of those lines are in, and the uh, $60,000 contribution from both water and sewer boards that have been made to that project. The, uh, Elizabeth J. Dinky Townstone River Walk Trail Extension number four, which I know is a long title, but uh, Jay submitted an application which we've got word that we were approved for the $50,000 for the uh, engineering planning phase of that project, which takes it from Marion up to Montegalia Street. And he has submitted an, an intent to apply for $240,785 and change for uh, the construction money. So that, that intent to apply has been submitted by Jay and we'll, if they approve our intent to apply, we'll come to council for uh, a, a vote to continue with that. And as Callie mentioned, Route 20 Railroad Crossing, we've, we've talked with DOH and then a railroad they are going to do an upgrade to the crossing, which is great. And it's going to be a, we have talked years, literally years about making a more permanent upgrade to that crossing. This time they are doing such. You see them doing a lot of the prep work out there right now. So that being said, and again, you know, the city is, they were, they were gracious enough to invite us to their meetings just so they could keep us informed, but we do not have any uh, input in the project or uh, any control over the project whatsoever from the city of it. Uh, they will start, and, and actually it will be shut down August 22nd through the 24th, and they'll have emergency routes for uh, emergency services vehicles, but they will be to all traffic around that during that day because they actually are pouring concrete, so you're going to have a concrete crossing there as opposed to that black top that keeps uh, bagging out and causing the issues. So again, it's going to be a more permanent fix, a little longer inconvenience for folks, but that's a that's a weekend, so hopefully it won't be too bad for everyone. 
And that's all I have, Mayor. That's just questions. <coughs> Any questions for Jerry? How's the progress going on the uh, fire tap? Is the fire is completed. Okay, up to the. I know a lot of people would ask about the what was going on from the theater. Somebody explain that just a little bit further. Before. Well, you know, they had to, the the water department had to dig down, and they have a six-inch water main in the street. That's the that's the hole out near the street, and then they had to bring a four-inch main into the theater be, building for the fire. For, uh, suppression system. So that's why, and, and again, they've done a great job because they maintained the curb. So uh, they made it real easy for us to go back in and, and pour that concrete back because our forms are already set. Good. And the curb's there, they maintained that center section and tunnel under. <coughs> so again, uh, about a 21 foot joint of pipe through the back of the theater and it was fed all in one piece into the ditch so there's no no joints between the valve on the main line into the theater building itself we actually the rain actually helped us out a little bit today we uh, patched the, the hole that goes into the theater it rained uh, the water got in the trench we noticed after lunch that we had a uh, trickle of water into the basement so we dug it back out we resealed the pipe and then we formed up the pour with our sidewalk we're going to pour essentially another wall around the pipe to ensure that there's no water infiltration back in the basement because that wall did stay dry prior to that perforation so and also capped off uh, the old copper service line that came into the, the basement so feels pretty uh, secure about maintaining the integrity of that wall thank you yes sir yeah you do great work up there oh, yeah. Yeah. Jerry, help me remember. We just had waste board. What did they say about the um, the shredding? Shred event. September twelfth. Yeah. When? September twelfth. Uh, I, uh, <coughs> I don't know what the time is. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. It's usually, usually in the morning. In the yeah, morning, morning at nine or something. So. It's nine a.m. to noon. Nine a.m. to noon. Uh -huh. yeah. Community-wide shred event will still take place at Crossroads, September 12th. Callie says 9 a.m. to noon. There we are. Sponsored by the Usher County Solid Waste Authority. Yeah. Uh, and just to piggyback on on the closure of, of Crossroads, we are we we still, as Jerry said, um, folks can bring their recyclables to the Mudlick location. Uh, and in the city, we do have curbside recycling uh, month or the first and third Tuesdays of every month. If you live in the city of Buchanan, you can put your recyclables out on your down, down by the curb, and uh, our crew will come and pick them up for you. So, uh, or if you miss those dates, you can take it out to Mudley. So we are not eliminating options for people. We're just trying to protect. Our, we're trying to trying to protect our, our employees and we're trying to make sure that the most that's taken out there is actually recycled not not trashed so okay thanks Jerry we'll uh, reevaluate here for under strategic you've got an item so we'll uh, uh, as soon as we get through correspondence and information and consent agenda we'll have you come back thank you Jerry Oh, and Ann Barrel, it's time for your report. Oh, if you want to skip me, that's fine. No, no, we need, we need to know if we have any money to play with. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to play with it. The that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful thing. Okay, uh, right up front, though, I do want to mention uh, the pound stone scholarship tonight. Um, we want we the city wants to thank the family for being so generous with that the sure. last 13 years and I want to note this is uh, this is actually the last scholarship they um, no longer have any funds for that and uh, that was our last scholarship to award uh, the family to award to those people so it's been a nice time um, I'm going to worry with our numbers <laughs> um, this is the first meeting of the month, so I give you the general fund based sort of numbers. Uh, general fund money market and checking. You have uh, at the end of July, or I'm seeing, yeah, end of July, 
uh, $538,485. The CD is $85,664. Historic Landmark Savings, $3,023. Stalker Youth Center uh, Capital Campaign is $437,742. That includes the $12,000 pledge. We have $38,338 in the uh, fire truck savings that will go towards uh, the payment of the fire truck. And I might pause there for a moment. Um, I did talk to the fire truck vendor. Uh, we are still locking in our rates at uh, the community bank, uh, really good rates. But uh, the truck won't be ready. Uh, it's going to take 13 to 15 months, he told me, to manufacture that truck. So we will not have that truck for about a year yet. Um, flood control, $9,387. Uh, coal tax checking, $56,670. Municipal stabilization, uh, $514,397. Uh, and I, sorry, I didn't put the sales tax down there. I'll get that for you the next meeting. Uh, the police department conducted physical agility tests uh, this past couple weeks ago, uh, eight candidates are going to proceed to written tests that are going to be conducted on August the 19th. So expect to have interviews at the end of August or the first part of September for police uh, position and we'll coordinate with you all to see when you're available. Um, we are taking fire department applications. JD's not going to be here tonight so I'm sure you want me to mention that. Uh, anyone interested in submitting a fire department application for a firefighter does have to be in by September the 11th, call City Hall, and we will get you an application. And the sanitary department uh, accepted bids and are purchasing a Caterpillar track hoe, and it is in the amount of $165,000. The invoices worth noting in your uh, bills to be approved tonight. Um, the police software reporting system, 7856 that's an annual um, payment. $4,112 for ADA maps for the Gateway West uh, project. Uh, Region 7 planning and planning regional dues, Region 7 planning regional dues, $6,485. Uh, Sherman Williams of Elkin Street. Street and curb paint, $2,138. Central supply concrete for the Gateway West, $10,935. Kipper <coughs> salt for blacktop of the new streets at CVS, now Apothecary Way, $31,219. Uh, buy water for the self uh, insurance claims funding that's going to flow out probably for a few months was $29,780. And uh, then we had to expense uh, $54,000 uh, to pay flex for the health savings account for the employees. That was a one-time expense for this year. And I think that's my report. Uh, your revenues and expenses are in your packet. Uh, I might note that this particular report is the working budget. We have not been able to, we can't install it until we're finished closing out some other books with our accountant, Richard Trent. So the uh, budget revisions that we've had to do in July are not in here. So they'll be installed when uh, the actual physical budget is installed in the system. Okay. Thanks, Andy. <coughs> I, I, should, I, should, I should have asked, are there questions for Andy before we let her go? Okay, thanks, Amy. Uh, Chief Kimball is not here this evening. He was planning to be, but as I mentioned at the onset of the meeting, uh, with the vehicle crash that was up at Rock Cave, that uh, that uh, involved his family member. So JB is not with us this evening. So uh, his report is in the packet. Um, he did a nice job with it. Uh, I'm I'm not going to go through it because um, I'll probably. Uh, not represent it exactly right. So uh, review his report uh, at your at your leisure, and if you have questions for him, uh, contact uh, Chief Kimball directly. Uh, spoke with Tom before the meeting. Um, he, he's he's going to defer his report to the strategic issues, which is where he has all of his uh, work that he's been uh, getting ready for us. So we will go to correspondence and information. 
uh, in your packet. Uh, there are several things with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office sales tax, municipal quarterly distribu distribution for April through June, uh, West Virginia Municipal Municipal League annual conference September 22 through 24th is now on a virtual platform that was supposed to be at Charleston. It is not going to happen on site. Uh, Atlantic Coast Pipeline LLC cancellation and related updates. Uh, Buchanan Police Department notice of accepting sealed bids for HD Wi-Fi in-car and body camera systems. If you'll recall, we've already uh, we already approved that for them, um, and so that's just a line item for information only. Uh, Next is a report of cat and dog activity by the Upshur County Commission, June 2020. The City of uh, Buckhannon Financial Statements Audit Fiscal Year 2018-2019 are available at City Hall and we had, uh, of course, the auditor's report earlier this evening. Uh, notice the Charles W. Gibson Public Library uh, hiring of a library aide. Um, that's been circulating on social media. And then finally, um, I, this is so we discussed last time and we did have uh, we've talked amongst ourselves council a pending uh, city of Buchanan board appointments and committees uh, the reason that is not on for strategic issues to, to finalize those uh, names and those committees this evening is because we are waiting still for several uh, yeses from folks that have been asked so um, we do have some back, but we don't have all of them back. Uh, I do appreciate the council's uh, work on this. We will, uh, so if you've got anybody out there that is still, uh, hasn't given you a, a, an affirmative on a committee, let's try to reach out to them this coming next week uh, so that we can get this list finalized so that we can um, officially accept it at the uh, August 20th council meeting. Uh, so that's all for correspondence and information. Under the consent agenda, we have the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on 7 16 of 2020. We have the approval of the building and wiring permits, and we have the approval of payment of our bills. Um, I will entertain a motion and second uh, to approve our consent agenda. So okay. we have a motion by uh, Councilman Rigger, a, a second by Council Lady Allball. Uh, Hearing the need for no discussion, I will call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, light sign. The motion is carried unanimously. Okay, we're down to strategic issues. F1, I mentioned at the onset of the meeting, um, that's, that's we're, we're still working on some details uh, with that, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, F2, uh, you know, I voted for Vandalia Way. I thought that would have been nice. And so, and I'm sure Callie knows that because that that was that, that came that came from my uh, vote. But um, so, but anyway, we have under F2 the approval of naming the new street over by CBS. Help me, Callie. What is it? Apothecary Way received Apothecary by Way. far the most first place. Our first choice votes. We let them rank the choices, you know, one through five, one being our top choice, and it by far got the most first choice votes. If it makes you feel better, Vandalia Way got the most second choice votes. Well, good. Well, good. That's one. I like that. <laughs> How Copeland do? I think it was second for first place votes. However, it was a distant second. Oh well, there. That that was me. How many times you vote? <laughs> <laughs> it's in your packet. Vote early, vote off. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks, uh, Callie uh, and, and Josh Trent for coordinating uh, this uh, community engagement exercise. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate all that submitted a name as well as those who participated in voting. So, um, Council. Uh, if you would like to do so, we can do it right now. We can approve the naming of the new street, Apothecary Way. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Thomas, a second by Council Lady Allball. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we will call for the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion has carried unanimously. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Arnold, we're back to you. The approval uh, and to accept the bid opening results with the concrete mixer and silo. Yes, sir. We had a bid opening on Monday uh, morning, and we only received one bid. It was from Dominion Equipment Parts LLC, uh, out of Ashland, Virginia, and the concrete self-loading concrete mixer was $134,000, and the 18-ton uh, horizontal silo was $45,000 dollars for both pieces of equipment. We had, when we talked about a budget session, I think I had estimated about $150,000 for the mixer and about twenty five dollars for the silo, so uh, we were almost there. I should have estimated a little higher because I thought $4,000 off of my estimation in the budget session. There is uh, a little bit of site work to do as far as if we go that route uh, with providing three phase power to that, but uh, under ten thousand dollars worth of site work. What was that again for the site work under ten? Well, site work, yeah. yeah. Under ten thousand, Yeah, it'll be under ten thousand dollars for site work. Again, we're we're looking at uh, you know after after uh, Jack's comment when we talked about it before. We're actually looking at ways to become more mobile with this, and uh, we're we're devising a plan to be able to maybe move our silo with uh, generators from other departments power. So if we have an ongoing project in one one location, that we're able to take our uh, essentially our show on the road with our with our concrete, because that's really the only specialty item that would be the actual dry concrete. Hey Jerry, what what was your projected savings, annualized projected savings? Over five years, over five years, David, it was about six hundred and sixty thousand dollars projected savings based on uh, five years or kind of five years out. Yeah. First year, I think, it was around one hundred and forty thousand dollars. <coughs> Andrea, are we going to? Uh, Finance this also? Yes, you built that into the budget financing, so I'm glad you brought that up. So, in your motion to approve, I'd like you to also motion for me to seek financing on it as well. I'll make the motion to approve it, right? And the other part, too. Yep. To also authorize financing. Okay, we'll, we'll wait till this passes and then we'll. For the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. For the motion. Yes, sir. $10,000. Yeah, we'll, we can pull that off our materials and supplies. Yeah. Is that satisfactory? Okay. So the motion is to accept the bid and seek financing. The financing. Yeah. And that was made by Thomas and seconded by Mary. Uh -oh. Who was it? I haven't called for a question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you I'm want to, you can, but I'll ask for a second to to well, bounce from Thomas. Ryan Rollins hasn't done it. Oh, oh, oh. Did he second it? Did you second that, CJ? He threw the phone against the wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second by Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion uh, further? We, we, I think, I think this is the third meeting we've discussed this. So, um, this is this is a this is necessary. It's a no-brainer, and as Councilman Thomas uh, pointed out, as with Jerry, this is a, to be a significant savings that is over the next five years. Uh, great, uh, great investment on our on the part of our city. So, without further ado, and, and Robbie, I think that should be put on the website. Sure. The savings, and I'd uh, like the, uh, hopefully the papers would put that in the highlight that that's a significant move. Actually. You may, you may have to, you may have to fix Katie a dinner to, to, to I can do that. that. I I both of them. Uh, uh, so we will go ahead and call for the question. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I think we're, we're done with it. Uh, all those opposed, like sign. 
Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, Mr. O'Neill is up with his report uh, for the final two line items on strategic. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Tom. Good to be with you, David. Ordinance number 446 is a uh, to housekeeping ordinance uh, related to the actions of the State Farm Marshal in adopting an updated uh, version of the National Electric Code, uh, as uh, Vincent Smith described uh, earlier. Um, any questions? Okay, I'll read the ordinance by caption and then uh, leave it to you. Okay. Right. Sure. Ordinance number 446 of the City of Buchanan, an ordinance amending prior ordinances of the City of Buchanan by providing for the adoption of the West Virginia State and Building Code set forth and defined by Title 87, Series 4 of the Code of State Rules as amended and declaring an emergency. I'm, uh, I should note that this is, uh, under the charter, this is being characterized as an emergency ordinance because of the deadline set by the fire marshal uh, so that this ordinance can take effect as quickly as possible without the usual 30-day waiting period. Is it, are there any questions or comments? This is some, this is a matter of formality. It's something we, we, we must do. Uh, so I will go ahead and entertain a motion that we approve Ordinance 446 for the City of Buchanan. So, okay, we have a motion by Sanders, a second by Allball. I thought CJ did. Okay. No, I heard those two. Okay. So, okay, we'll call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh -huh. Those opposed, light sign. The motion is carried unanimously. Okay, uh, F5. And uh, ordinance number 447, uh, as, uh, as Vincent uh, described earlier, I think is going to be, uh, we're going to dispense with that. Uh, I think that uh, the objective of that ordinance can be accomplished with a, a discussion with the municipal court judge. And I think if we can kind of sort things out there, we'll be okay. I agree. Okay. okay. Thanks, Tom. Do we have to sign something? No, no, no this is not a resolution. Okay. okay, resolution. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, that takes us down to comments and announcements. So we'll start first with Mary. I have nothing more to say. Okay. I like your blue tonight. Thank you. Uh, it's red? No. Oh, good. Uh, Pam is uh, not with us this evening. We hope she's enjoying her time away. Uh, CJ. Yes, sir. Do <laughs> you have any comments for the good of the order? Yes. Uh, over the last few years, we've talked several times about collaborating with the county and uh, conducting a three-phase study into the delivery of emergency services within Upshur County. At one point, we thought we had an agreement with the county to uh, jointly undertake this, and it didn't come about. I think uh, we should revisit this. I believe the county may be favorable to participating with us and uh, conduct a three-phase study with Jeff Harvey's uh, company uh, on the delivery of emergency services within Upshur County. And uh, I'd like to, at some point in the near future, uh, invite Jeff, we'll get him on the agenda to come present uh, the structure of this uh, study. So, down the road. We can do it. It's a great idea. That's a good, that's a good suggestion, CJ. Yeah. I think, I think, that's it. I think long term, I think both organizations will be better if we can always look for opportunities to work together. So, Yes. Councilman Thomas. Well, just to sort of tell you back on what CJ was talking about, uh, I, I do think it's important for us to work with the county commission and uh, also the, uh, uh, I remember, I think it was like 10 or 12 years ago, the development authority at one time had a, a strategic planning session with the county commissioners, the city council, 
uh, individuals from the college and some other organizations. And I think once in a while, you know, we live in a fairly small community, 24,000 in the county, 25,000. So he's part of that. And uh, college is a big part of that too. And I think we need to put our brains together occasionally and uh, talk about what we envision for the future next 10, 15, 20 years. I know we have a long range plan here, but I think it involves the county too. And uh, that's something that CJ was talking about with this situation with emergency services. It makes a lot of sense to work together. Uh, the only other thing I want to add is that I would hope residents that have dogs and cats, uh, please be aware of your neighbors uh, in regard to the cats, you know, uh, out of the, uh, the pro person's property or dogs barking constantly. It happens too much, unfortunately. And uh, that goes along with the keeping your property uh, the way it should be looking so that everybody in the neighborhood feels comfortable. And uh, I wish everybody a great weekend and uh, stay safe. Thanks, Dave. Jack? I think, um, see, uh, if I recall, CJ was the genesis of the idea of a mixer. And, and Jerry, purchasing a concrete truck. I think that's a tremendous thing. The cost of concrete goes up about 7% every year. And right. the savings for the city, the uh, timeliness and the efficiency, the, uh, it's not the money saving, but just being able to expedite a project and not have to wait and using people's time. I just think that that is, a, to, to me, just one of the most tremendous things on a local level I've seen in a long, long time in any community. So you guys are to be commended in all honesty. I'm, I'm just duly impressed. Absolutely. I agree. It's a great, great clip. Okay, Randy. Uh, just a quick shout out to our friends over at West Virginia Wetland College. I know that they have toiled over a lot of decisions over the last several months and and uh, they did make the decision to open online classes on August 17th and uh, I think, and, and you may know this Mayor, I think the next decision uh, will be around the 28th of August to determine whether students will be coming back on campus or not. Uh, I know they're dealing with a lot. It's the biggest time of young people's lives to come to college and have that experience, but it's also, you just have to be, uh, you have to be smart. And I just want to give a shout out to the West Virginia West Virginia College <coughs> uh, for taking things uh, seriously, I think. Uh, they've done on this and they've, they've already done. Well, that's it. Thank you, sir. You know, we, uh, there's not a single thing that hasn't been derailed uh, by, the, by this awful virus. And, um, you know, we, uh, we, it, it, it affects everybody. And, um, you know, it, it makes our jobs more difficult. It makes our employees' jobs more difficult. Um, makes the business community's lives more difficult. Um, so uh, I just... Uh, you know, we, we just want to we want to we want to really keep, you know, being an encouraging body of our employees and everybody that is a part of making this community so great. Um, you know, just a just a nice a nice smile. Uh, you know, support of businesses. We want to make sure we always continue to support our businesses. But um, you know, thank our city employees that, that give so much back. Um, you know, these are not easy times to be a part of, and uh, how how we make it through it will will uh, you know that that will that will be how our community and our, and our society is uh, you know is looked at and, and remembered. So um, I just uh, I appreciate all of you. I really enjoyed so far working with all of you. Um, it's uh, it's been a whirlwind so far. Lots of meetings, lots of uh, jumping in head first, but. Um, you know, I I'm, I just I appreciate I appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of our employees, and I appreciate everyone who makes uh, Buckhannon what it is and works hard every single day. So that's all I've got at uh, 8:44. We will consider this meeting officially adjourned. Hi ho, hi ho. Have a great weekend.